Hi, sixth graders. It's Ms. Caliendo here to explain your assignment for your virtual learning day. So it is going to be your first virtual learning day where you are going to be working with mini lessons and working with the curriculum, which you've seen now in class when you've worked with me. So to access that information, you're going to be on your Google Classroom. There will be sort of a to-do list for you on your Google Classroom so you can kind of work your way through it, okay? And so it's going to look something like this, okay? So you have assignment number one where you're reading the unit, you're doing the reading unit of study, session two, which is titled Textual Lineage. You are going to first need to access your Readers and Writers digital notebook, which is going to be in your classwork tab of Google Classroom, and you're going to be looking on slide number 24. On slide number 24, there's going to be a link for your mini lesson video. And you're going to need this username and password in order to access your mini lesson video. Then I'm going to have assignments on slide 24 that you're going to need to complete after watching the mini lesson video. The assignments you're going to complete are done by our teacher in the mini lesson video. So it's super important you watch that video first before you try to tackle any of the other parts of slide 24. Okay, and so I'll kind of walk you through those steps here in a second, and then you're going to have some time to independently read and do some independent work time. Okay, and then your second assignment is going to be that you need to finish your refugee read aloud. So some of you are going to see some different chapters listed here depending on which day it is that you're doing this virtual assignment. So for co cohort A, you're doing this and you're going to be listening to chapters 13, 14, and 15, whereas cohort B, you're going to be doing it another day. So your chapters that you're going to have to listen to are going to be different. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and access classwork kind of give you a little refresher of how to get there. So Readers and Writers Digital Notebook is what we're going to be clicking on. So you're going to click there and then you're going to click on your student copy. And once you click on your student copy, it's going to bring you to a screen that looks like this. And so this should be familiar to you from being in class with me. So I'm going to go to my own digital notebook that you guys have seen me work in in class and I'm going to kind of walk you through the steps in my personal digital notebook. So I'm going to exit out of that one and head to my own. Okay, so you would have opened it up and it would have taken you to slide one. We're going to head down to slide number 24. And so it is session two. So right under session two, it says click to start the mini lesson video. I'm going to go ahead and click here. And it's going to bring you to a link. Okay, and you are going to have to log in to this video in order to see it. Okay, and so that's when you are going to be using this username and password. So the username is Caliendo6, your password is Tyson6. So when you go to access this video, there's going to be an opportunity for you to enter a username and password. Your username is Caliendo6, your password is Tyson6. So making sure that we're entering that in, otherwise you're not going to be able to view the video. So you're going to view the video. Once you've finished viewing the video, you're going to go back to your Readers and Writers digital notebook. So these are some of the pictures that you would have seen in the video. Okay, And this is our teacher's work that she completed throughout the video and as she kind of chatted with you. Now I completed the same work. Okay, And so I first started by creating a textual lineage or textual history, which she talked about in the video. And so these are just books that impacted me either as a child, kind of as a teenager, or books that recently impacted me. And so Rainbow Fish by Marcus Pfister was one of my absolute favorite books as a kid. I even dressed up as Rainbow Fish for Halloween. The Dr. Seuss books were super big in the house that I grew up in, and my parents read those to us frequently. Some of my favorite ones were Go Dog Go and Green Eggs and Ham. Then Andrew Clements, when I was in elementary school, I loved his books. The school story was an ultimate favorite, and same with Frindle, so I listed there, those there too. Then when I was in high school, I got into the private series, and that was done, written by Kate Bryan, and I really enjoyed those books. Lots of good drama 
in those. And then What She Knew by Gillian Macmillan was a book that I read during quarantine. And it was one of those mystery fiction books that I kind of fell in love with over quarantine. And then now as a class, we're reading Refugee by Alan Gratz. And then I'm really loving that book and what it's opening me up to. So I wrote that one down as well. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to show you the work that I did down here on the bottom. So now that I listed some books that kind of had an impact on me, that when I think about the books that I read when I was younger, these are the ones that pop up and stick out in my head. So now I listed Andrew Clements, Alan Gratz, and Gilly Macmillan as authors that kind of impacted me. Um, and I was just really always loved Andrew Clements, loved the books that he wrote. Alan Gratz, I totally, after reading having started reading Refugee, want to read more of his books, and Gillian Macmillan, her mystery fiction book just totally hooked me, and so I'd love to read some more of her books too. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit further because this is super tiny over here. So now looking at my textual lineage and my kind of timeline that I created for books that I've read in the past, I am now kind of reflecting on that. And what do I notice about my textual lineage? Well, a lot of my books are fiction stories, um, if not all of them. And so that was something that I noticed. So fiction is obviously something that's a favorite of mine. And if it wasn't fiction, it was some type of fiction. So whether it was historical fiction, mystery fiction, whatever, realistic fiction, it was some sort of a fiction genre. And then a lot of the texts I read are about people similar to me. So the private series was about young girls and boys um, and kind of the drama of high school. Andrew Clements has um, young kids um, as his characters, and so that was kind of familiar to me as well. What she knew was a white woman who was a mom, so somewhat relatable, except I'm not a mom. And then... Refugee was kind of the first book that has opened me up to some new experiences. And I'm really enjoying this historical fiction genre that we've kind of gotten into. And so those were some of my thoughts once I kind of reflected and took a look at my textual lineage. And so the last part is now I'm going to create my reading plan. And so I kind of decided that I'm going to spend about five minutes doing some research on some more historical fiction books and maybe looking at some books that are going to open me up to some different types of characters and some different experiences that I personally haven't gone through and just what I can learn from reading books about others that are different from me. And then after I've done some research, I'm going to go back to my books on deck list, which was slide 23, and I'm going to add them on here. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to spend about 25 minutes independently reading. And that's going to be my reading plan for my 30 minutes. So now that I've created my reading plan, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to read for 25 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and come up here to my timer. And I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click it again. And now it's going to bring me to a timer. And I'm going to reset this. And I'm going to keep it up so that I can keep track of my 30 minutes of work that I'm about to accomplish. And so I'm going to spend about five minutes on kind of doing some research of old books or new books that I can read. And then I'm going to spend about 25 minutes independently reading. And that's going to be my work for today. Then once I've finished all of that, I'm going to go back to Google Classroom and I'm going to make sure that I complete my refugee read alouds. And there's some a written portion that goes along with that too. So I'm going to go back to Google Classroom and here are going to be my read aloud videos. And then I am going to be having you use Thursday and Friday to complete the response to reading number one. So I'm going to show you where that is. So if you come to Google Classroom and you go to Classwork, and then we are going to be going to our Read Aloud Digital Notebook. So I'm going to click that, and it's going to bring you to this. And then... I'm going to go down to slide, for you guys it's going to be slide number eight. Let me show you guys. So you guys are going to come here, 
your read aloud digital notebook, and you're gonna go down to slide number eight. And so your job between Thursday and Friday is to write a paragraph for each of our characters. And so the question that you're working to answer is discuss the reasons that Joseph, Isabel, and Mahmoud's families leave their homes. What are the situations in each of their lives that force them to flee? So a paragraph is about three to five sentences. So making sure that one sentence is not enough, that's not following the expectations. So making sure that you're writing about three to five sentences to explain why each of the characters has been forced to leave their home. And so I might begin by saying, Joseph's family was forced to flee their home. I'm going to zoom in for you. Home country of Germany. The reason they were forced to flee was because, and I'm going to stop there so I don't give the answer away. Okay? But that, right there already, I already have my opening sentence, and now I'm starting to write my second sentence. And so I'm just going to write a few more sentences, and that's going to be my paragraph for Joseph. And then I'm going to move on to Isabel. So remember that you are writing a paragraph for each character. And a paragraph is three to five sentences. And this is something that I am checking. So please make sure that you are doing that. And so you have Thursday and Friday to complete all three characters however you choose. So if you'd like to do them all in one day, you can. If you want to do Joseph and Isabel on Thursday and then Mahmoud on Friday, you can do that. So however, cho however you choose to split them up is completely up to you as long as by the end of Friday... You also have the weekend if you need it, but by the end, before you see me next, you have all three responses written. And boys and girls, like always, if you have questions or you're confused, please feel free to reach out to me via email. I know that I am going to be having students in class, but during when those students go to Encore, I'm more than happy to respond to emails. We could even Zoom or Google Meet. So please make sure that you're taking advantage of that and reaching out to me if you need help. Alrighty, I am looking forward to reading your responses and seeing all the great work that you do on your virtual learning days.